Hello and welcome back to Redwood Acres. Today we got another great Laura Mesh Communications video. This one is going to be for beginners or people that are looking to get into uh, Laura Mesh Communications. So if you've been recommended that, hey, your friends, family, whatever, say, hey man, you should get one of these Laura devices. Well, which one should you start with? And I'm going to tell you, we'll remove that one for a second. These T-beams is what I was introduced to through, via YouTube and other YouTubers, right? So that's what I bought. And for a while, that's all I had. In fact, quite a while, that's all I had. And they work fine. Uh, however, there's fairly, my goal here is to help remove barriers to entry. So barriers to getting into mesh communications or other types of communications. Emergency communications is our focus on the preparedness kind of you know spectrum. So what does it take to get one of these T-beams? Well, you get you buy one of these, now, if you pay a little extra, you can get, have this already soldered on. So I would say I recommend if you don't own a solder iron and you don't know how to solder, probably don't want to do that unless that's something you want to learn, right? It doesn't come with a battery, so you got to buy a battery. And uh, those are 18650 batteries, or you could be like me and, you know, harvest ones out of old laptop. Uh, this wasn't that actually that old um, style and save yourself some money if you have access to those. Um, so... But if not, you're going to pay a price for that. If you want to learn how to solder and you don't have a solder iron, you're going to have to buy a solder iron and solder and all that stuff. So getting into one of these uh, is going to um, cost you a lot more. It doesn't come with a case. You're going to have to buy or print a 3D printed case off of or buy a case off of Etsy typically is most places that I've seen them and purchased them from. Now I have my own 3D printer. But did I buy a 3D printer just so I could print a couple cases? No, because that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. They're several hundred dollars, uh, even for a cheaper one, uh, just to print you know one or two cases. Not worth it. Now if you have other projects or you already have one and you want to learn, or that's your your prerogative, right? Other thing I don't like about them is they're fairly fragile. Uh, I bricked this one, and that could be happened to any of them. I don't know what happened. Updating the firmware, I've tried multiple different ways to bring it back to life. It does. I do get some of the LEDs, but I can't get anything the screen to uh, come up. I've considered just popping a new screen on there and seeing if it's that, but I don't really think it's that. It's it's only like a month or two old. So, um, but yeah, that sucks because that's about fifty bucks in the hole. Uh, this one dropped it a not even waist height, waist height and it hit on the antenna and broke the solders on the antenna. Well, that's kind of a pain. It's I can resolder it because I have that the capabilities and the tools to do it. But I have to get to the points down below this this battery holder. I'm gonna have to remove the battery holder. It's just kind of a pain in the butt. Not that easy to work on, right? So fairly fairly fragile. So back to this. Well, what's this? It's still a Lily Go device, but it's the T Echo. It comes basically as you see it here. It does have a different antenna. I have a better aftermarket antenna, antenna uh, that I got off of DigiKey, and uh, I have quite a few of them now. But it comes as you see it. It's plug and play. Other than potentially wanting to update the firmware, you are ready to go. It has a screen, has a battery internal, has the case. It's ready to go. It doesn't look intimidating. And it works good. Um, I, I've had great success with this. And all future portable ones I'm going to be buying are going to be the T-Echos. Now for building nodes and stuff like that, Rack Wireless Whiz Blocks are the way to go. I have videos on those here at the end of the video. There will be a linked playlist. If you're interested in learning more, you can check out my videos there and learn. Uh, and I have other videos from other YouTubers because there's a, a lot of great information here on YouTube about mesh tastic so and lower devices so what are your questions put them down below um get started diversify your comms i'm gonna have an update uh video coming in the future that's going to be talking use cases but think about it this way this is a perfect way to communicate silently no voice communications required uh no grid required yeah the range is is limited in most cases but hey, it's perfect for those short range areas, small groups and an event, search and rescue teams, cert teams, um, overlanders, all kinds of different cases you can use it. It's it's great, but check, you'll be seeing that video here soon. 
and you'll definitely know about it if you subscribe to the channel, if you watch this long. Check us out at theravenwoodacres.com. You can follow us via our social media links, which are linked below. Stay tuned for more and have a great day.